Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be looking or and the, at the network core and we'll start discussing mainly about packet switching and circuit switching. In the previous lecture, if you re recall, we looked at the network edge and we looked at the end systems, mainly the hosts <clears throat> that make up the internet. We also looked at the access networks to which the different hosts connect to and we had a brief discussion of the physical media that is used to connect the different hosts in the internet. Today we'll, uh, we'll move on and look at the network core and then we'll talk about two important paradigms called packet switching and circuit switching. But first, what is the network core? The network core consists of a mesh of interconnected routers. So in this figure, the two, the routers in the two blue networks that you can see constitute the core of the internet. And what they do is they help to carry packets from the, from the source to the destination. So for example, let's consider that your phone, through your phone, you're trying to access the website of google.com. Now, the server of google.com is going to serve you this, uh, the data that you requested for, but what it's going to do is it's going to divide this high level application layer message into smaller network level packets. These network level packets are then going to traverse the internet and then move from the server of google.com to your to the client, which is the phone, which is the phone here. What these routers do is that they forward packets from one router to the next such that uh, the packet moves closer to the <clears throat> To the to the destination for example here the source is basically the server of google.com which is trying to send you the web page of google.com and the destination is your client which had requested the web page what the routers in the internet would do is that they would move these packets closer to uh, to your would help move these packets from the from the server to you now each of these packets are just going to be transmitted at the full capacity of the links connecting these intermediate routers. So now to carry this data from the source to the destination, the paradigm that's used in the internet today is a circuit switch model. Is a, sorry, is a packet switched model. In a packet switched model, what the entire message, as I mentioned before, is divided into smaller packets, and each of these packets are is carried from the source to the destination. What the routers of the intermediate routers do is that they store each of these packets and then forward it to the next router. And this process continues till the packet reaches the host which had requested the message. Now, let's try to analyze how this uh, packet sw switched <coughs> paradigm is going to work. Let us assume that there are L bits in a packet. Now, to transmit a L bit packet over an R bit cable, it's going to take R over L time unit, L over R time units, because L bits divided by R bits per second, which is L over R. Now this, so in this figure here, as you can see, there are there's there are two hosts which are connected by this router in between, and to, we're trying to move a packet from one of the hosts to the other host. Now to transmit it for the first R bits per second link, the time that is going to take is L over R. Now to move it to the next uh, R bits per second link, it's going to take another L over R time. So the total time to move a packet from one host to the other is two times L over R. This is the total <coughs> tr transmission delay that's going to take place to get the packet from one host to which is the source to the other host, which is the destination. So let's look at a numerical example to understand this concept of delay. So let's assume that the packet that is going to be transmitted is 7.5 megabits, which is 7.5 to the times 10 to the power 6 bits. And the rate at which packets can be transmitted over the wire is is R, which is 1.5 megabits per second. To get the delay over one of these <coughs> links, to get from, say, one of the hosts to the router, it's L over R. And if you do L over R, it's going to give you five seconds. So that, that is just the one hop transmission delay from the source to the router. Now, to as I just mentioned, the end-to-end -end delay, it's two times that. So the end-to-end -end delay is going to be two times five seconds, which is 10 seconds. Apart from the 
the delay that I just mentioned, which is a transmission delay, packet switching also incurs other kinds of delay, which is well, the one example is a queuing delay. So let us assume that there is a queue at every router and packets for, uh, are coming into the queue. You can think of these packets as, as one classic example of a queue is a queue at a bank. So you can think of these different packets are, as human beings that are entering the queue at a bank and say at a teller to get whatever to get <coughs> money for, uh, from the bank. So each of these packets experiences a delay while other packets are getting processed. So for example, you go to the bank to a teller to withdraw money and if there are some people already in the queue ahead of you, they have to be processed and only then your request is going to be processed. The amount of time that you spend waiting in the queue for other customers to be served in case of the teller is basically the queuing delay. It's similar here. Here in, in the router, in case of the routers, as you can see, there is a green packet and there is a and there are green packets and red and blue packets. The green packets, when the, the, the first blue packet enters, there are already two green packets in the queue. So only after the two green green packets have exited the queue can, will the blue packet move out of the queue. So that is the queuing queuing delay. Now so this is going to add to the total delay that it takes for a packet to reach from a source to a destination. We'll come uh, and discuss de delays in greater detail in, in the next lectures. Another important thing that you have to, what we have to take care of or study here is loss. Let's assume that the queue has a fixed capacity. So here let's assume that the queue has just four has a capacity of four that is it can only store four packets so in this example the router connected to a and b is already holding four packets now before those four pack once one of those packets is actually put onto the wire if additional packets enter they, there is no place for the router to hold those packets so those packets are going to be dropped now, if those packets are dropped, there is no way to recover those packets and though that causes a loss. So, some so lo there <coughs> in the internet, while using the internet, you can experience loss and, and that mainly happens because of, of queues overflowing and they do not having enough capacity to, uh, to accommodate all the packets that are coming to them. We'll, uh, we'll study delays and loss in greater detail as we move on. Now the two important network core functionalities that has that <coughs> happens in a in a packet switch network are routing and forwarding. So what is what is routing and forwarding? Routing is simply determining the path between a source and a destination. Let's let's look at an example here. Say you want to travel from Boston to San Francisco. To travel from Boston to San Francisco, you have to determine the intermediate towns. And say you want to do this road wire road, so you have to determine the intermediate towns where you're going to stop for the now night. And so this entire route that you take from from Boston to reach San Francisco through the intermediate towns, that is the route. Similarly, in the internet, when a <coughs> when a client is requesting some data from a server, the data from the server has to be gotten to the client, and that has to take place over a large number of routers. And the path to, to which this data flows to the to the client from the server is <coughs> actually determined using our routing algorithm. There's another aspect <coughs> to uh, to the, or another function of the network code, which is basically forwarding. Forwarding determines how packets are going to be forwarded. So here, what the routing algorithm is going to do is it's going to determine where which. Uh, if, if a router has multiple links, which link a particular packet should go through. So let's consider this routing table for, <coughs> for the router, which has, which has which output interfaces are marked as one, two, and three. Now what it says, we'll come to this in detail. What it says is certain packets are going to go through three. Some other packets, which have a different header value, are going through output link two and so on. So now a packet comes in with say a value in the header 0111. As you can see from the table, 0111 is outputted on the link or output link 2, 
this functionality of how to how to uh, how to transmit or forward packets based on the header information is called a forwarding function so routers implement to so routing is the high level idea of determining a route between a source and a destination and forwarding is the decision taken at each of the intermediate routers on how this packet is going to be forwarded an alternative to packet switch networks is circuit, uh, is circuit switch networks. In circuit switching, the entire resource between the two <coughs> end hosts have to be re reserved before any data or voice can be communicated. So it's a more circuit-like per performance and so there is a performance guarantee. So here in this diagram here, each link has four circuits and one circuit on, on both the links have to be reserved for the two hosts to communicate to each other <clears throat> and I'm talking about the two hosts that are diagonally opposite to each other and you can see in the figure that the circuit is marked in deep green. So though there is a guarantee on performance because resources have to be first allocated in a circuit switch network, there is the drawback that the first, the call, has to be first set up bef uh, or the resources, the entire path have to be reserved before data can be communicated. A circuit switch network is typically used in a telephone network. That is the place where circuit switch switching is widely prevalent. Whereas in the internet, it is packet switching that is widely prevalent. So let's look at how circuit switching is implemented. The two ways are frequency division multiplexing, that's FDM, or and TDM, which is time division multiplexing. In frequency division multiplexing, the entire frequency is divided into multiple bands, and each of those bands is allocated to a different user. So here, the entire frequency is divided into four bands and each band is allocated to a different user. So as you can see, the top band is allocated to the blue user while the pink user gets the bottom band. In time division multiplexing, it's time that is divided into, into smaller chunks and each time unit is allocated to a different user. So here, as, as you can see that each time unit is allocated to uh, each different user. So the fourth user gets to transmit so, so, for example, the blue user gets to transmit the first time slot and the fifth and the ninth and so on, the green in the second, sixth, tenth and so on. So, so basically, this is how a circuit switch network works, where the entire resources between the source and the destination have to be first reserved before any data can be communicated. So let's first look at the main differences between a packet switch and a circuit switch network. The main difference is that the packet switch network allows a lot more users to use the network. Let's look at an example. So let's consider this example where there are n users which are which are connected to a router and the router <coughs> has a one Mbps outgoing link. Now each user, when or active, has wants to send data as at 100 kilobits per second. The thing is, each user is only active 10% of the time. Now in a circuit switch network regardless of how long the users are active what happens is they have to have the entire resource allocated to them so because uh, each user desires 100 kilobits per second what happens is uh, there can only be 10 users that can be accommodated because 100 kilobits per second multiplied by 10 is 1 megabits per second so circuits which can only support 10 users on the other hand if we do a little bit of math and i will not go into that what you can you can see is the chance that 35 users in a packet switch network will be <clears throat> that with 35 users the chance that 10 users will be active at the same time remember that each user has only active 10 percent of the time is only 0 0.0004 so it's actually very low so a lot of users can be supported at the same time in a packet switch network. So that is the main takeaway message, even if you don't want to get into all this math. But so does that mean that packet switch is a clear winner over circuit switch? It is great for when there's bursty data. And for that, that is you want to send some amount of data and then you have nothing else to transmit. And then you want to send again some amount of data and have nothing else to transmit. That is what is called known as bursty data. It's, it's very simple because there's no call setup. Remember that in, in a circuit switch network, the entire resources from the source to the destination have to be reserved before any data can be set. This kind of setup is not required in a packet switch network. So it's much simpler. On the other 
and you cannot get any performance guarantees in a packet switch network whereas in a circuit switch networks though there is a delay in setting up the call once the call has been set up those resources have been allocated to you they cannot be taken away until unless you basically will give up those resources so it gives much more guarantee performance guarantees if you use a circuit switch network we will look at another aspect of a packet switch network in a packet switch networks what can happen is there can be excessive congestion and it can that can lead to packet delay and loss we had a brief discussion uh, on this earlier when we looked at deal queuing delays that were happening in a packet switch networks so there is no clear winner and there there are advantages to both but in the internet what is mainly used is the packet switch behavior and that is due to the fact that it can accommodate a large number of users but then because the internet uses a packet switch behavior there are no guarantees on performance unlike a circuit switch networks so i would like to end today's lecture by asking you to think of some human analogies which are which correspond to a circuit to the circuit switching and the packet switching behavior okay so please think about this and we will continue our discussion in the next class